You're watching UNICEF Television. Learning how to tell the time in a makeshift outdoor classroom without a watch. Keeping the attention of these children, many of whom don't even have a chair to sit on, is no easy task. While teaching under these circumstances is certainly challenging, Sister Cecilia Cuyela, an experienced teacher whose job it is to train others, says there are better ways of teaching the principles of time. The problem is, teachers need the right training to do so. The impression I got in this classroom here is that methodology is not appropriate. The lesson could have been more dynamic. It lacks a bit of energy for the children to become more motivated and to learn easier. Around a third of all teachers in Angola have no formal teaching training. This is part of the legacy left behind after a 27-year civil war. Not enough qualified teachers, not enough schools. Sister Cecilia is one of 350 teacher trainers in seven provinces who travels from school to school, helping teachers better their methods and improve their own education. This is part of the government of Angola's program of assistance to primary education, known as PIAP, the teacher training component of which is being supported by UNICEF and funded by the European Union. The EU has been supporting uh, UNICEF to, to, to implement uh, child-friendly schools. There basically are a couple of principles that make sure that they have quality education in an equitable fashion with participation of the stakeholders. In education, the three main challenges are equity, so to make sure that everybody has access to school, quality, so to make sure that kids really can write, read and write adequately at the end of the year, and continuity, for that you don't stop with primary school, but that you, you continue to the, to, to, to the secondary school. So, so the EU is, is, is really contributed to mainstreaming this child-friendly school principle. Away from the dusty grounds of primary school 200, the results of not only better resources, but also trained teachers speak for themselves. Paya brought innovation to us in education. As you see, my students, being in the second grade, they can already form sentences. They can already write words. Therefore, it was very good. Years of peace and a race to meet its Millennium Development Goals has led to a massive influx of children into schools. While thousands of schools are being built, now the issue for the government is how to not only meet the demand for schools, but ensure that these children receive a quality education. Today what worries us most is having the best qualified teachers. If we want to have quality education, let's say, the question of inclusion has not been totally reached, but it is close to being reached. Therefore, the current account in schooling fees has improved. Now we need to better the quality of learning, and to better the quality of learning, we have to better the training of teachers. Fixing Angola's education challenges is not as easy as one, two, three. It will take resources. The most important, it seems, are its human resources. Although they have a lot of financial resources in terms of uh, revenue from oil production and so on, but I think they need uh, foreign support still in terms of capacity building because the administration and even uh, human resources in the private sector are still underdeveloped and undertrained. As the day draws on and break time looms, the hope is that Angola's oil wealth will transform these outdoor classes into protective environments and that these teachers will be given the skills they need to turn these youngsters into the country's future leaders. This is Suzanne Vickers reporting for UNICEF Television. For more information, go to unicef.org. Unite for Children.